Orthopaedics, Surgical Implants and Joint Replacements, Part 2. Here we see a plastic implant of a knee replacement after two, year, two, year old, two years and a 72-year-old. Look for staining. It's a blade plate for fracture of the low end of the femur, supracondylar fractures of the femur. A cup, polyethylene cup with cement mantle. Look at the, it's a spacer that had to be replaced on knee replacement. Note the, note the delamination. A rush pin, the very useful rush pins for it can be used for all fractures. A screw with a plastic liner. Plastic liner is good to hold the screw from burrowing through the bone. The Sheehan hinge knee replacement from the 60s and 70s. The Shears, S H I E R S, hinge knee replacement. We don't use hinge knee replacements now. Here's a scholastic implant that's very popular in the 60s and 70s, but it causes scholastic synovitis after several years. It's scholastic. And again, a profile. And here's one that was used for the foot. It was retrieved after 14 years, causes a scholastic synovitis. And here they are again, retrieved from the toe. These Slovenian hip replacement, very good design. Smith Peterson fixation device for fractured necks of femur. Here's a spacer for white side knee replacement. A staple, we commonly use these after the osteotomies in orthopedics. The stem revised on SROM in 95. And here we have surgical fixation device as a whole viewer. AO nail, huck step nail, uh, sliding compression screw plates for fractured necks of femur. Here's a sliding screw plate, so called pin and plate. T uh, plastic tendon retrievers for reconstruction of flexor tendons and the rush pin staple scholastic implants. Has a new design of a scalpel blade, SW scalpel blade. Is a Tara total hip replacement, it's like a resurfacing type with a slim stem revised after eight years. A Thornton pin and plate. And here's a whole story of hip arthroplasty and one picture. The evolution that I've described previously, the isoelastic, which is a plastic one, they loosened up prematurely. Here's various uh, cages that we use with a defect of the acetabulum. Also, here is a resurfacing type configuration, narrow stem, uh, a slim stem, similar to what is used today. This is a thrust plate type of hip replacement, tibial component from the 1960s with almost separate tibial parts. Tibial component linked, so a little peg links it from the 60s. Tibial component milligalant 2, slots in screw fixation, tibial backing. Titanium mesh commonly used with his bone deficiency and acetabular revisions, very useful. Total knee replacement in the 60s, a broken tibial component. And here's the story of total knee replacement, the hinged, semi-hinged, non-hinged and immobile uh, plastic components and so-called Oxford knee. The Oxford knee has separate components. Uni knee replacement, just half the knee replaced, polyethylene space of the tibial component. Another uni knee, look the wear and tear, is revised for total knee replacement. Another uni, very useful. Another uni knee replacement, wear and tear of the tibial component. The plastic or polyethylene is particularly prone to wear. Here's a U.S. design of the Savash hip, a Russian surgeon Savash design hip replacement, very useful constraint, redesigned by the Americans to the Savash, and then it came out as the S-ROM. Various devices, fractured necks of femur. A Wainwright fixation device. We have a tibial component knee replacement, we have uh, again at five years. Now here's some wear particles and isoelastic typical hip replacement retrieved after two years. This amount of plastic wears when the polyethylene floats around inside the joint and the uh, implant bone interface causing inflammation and loosening. Well I hope you enjoyed that uh, presentation. I'll tell you something about the sort of surgical fixation devices and the implants we use in orthopedics. These have all been retrieved from living patients. These devices can fail where the bone hasn't healed or they can loosen up with time and require to be revised. Sometimes they used to break but that's unusual for the implants of today. They just tend to loosen. Thank you for your interest.